1975, Dupin Winery was founded. This proved to be a significant choice that would shape the lives of his family and also positively impact Dupin County for years to come. Muscadine grapes are native to our region and thrive in the hot, sandy conditions of eastern North Carolina. The Scuppernon, a variety of Muscadine, was first uh, the grape cultivated, cultivated in the United States and is the official fruit of North Carolina. In the early 1900s, North Carolina was one of the nation's most productive wine states with 25 wineries operating. But the industry closed with the onset of prohibition. As founder of the Dupin Winery, our honoree played a pivotal role in reintroducing Carolina's industry. North Carolina now is home to 186 wineries, more than 525 vineyards, and ranks 11th in the wine production in the United States. The annual economic impact of this industry to our state is $1.97 billion. Dupin Winery is recognized as the largest and oldest winery in the state and is the world's largest producer of muscadine wine. With expansion beyond Dupin County and beyond North Carolina, Dupin Winery now employs 152 people and has a capacity of 1.9 million dollars. <coughs> With 54 contract growers, Dupin Winery is primarily responsible for creating an agricultural trend toward grape growing for wine production as an alternative crop. Thousands of people visit Dupin Winery each year, and the impact of Dupin's business and industry has been notable. The young boy who grew up in Rose Hill struggling through the years of the Great Depression, loved Dupin County and loved its people. During his later years, he continued to go to work. Until the last months of his life, he was a self-appointed greeter at the winery as he would take his place in the rocking chair by the door and speak to each person as they entered. He was called Jiggs. He had been given to him by his aunt who enjoyed the comic strip, Jiggs and Maggie. He was known by many as DJ, and to his family, he was always Big D. This evening, the Dupin County Hall of Fame is proud to recognize Daniel Jerome Fussell, Jr. On behalf of the recipient, his son, Daniel Jerome Fussell, Jr., please come forward for the induction into the Dublin County Hall of Fame. Duplin County Hall of Fame in the year of our Lord, 2017. Thank you all very much. I do wish I had matured a little earlier so I could have appreciated it more. Uh, he was a good dad. He gave me and my family everything we ever wanted except a pony. <laughs> and, uh, even though he had a mule stable. But now one one time at Christmas, he said, look outside. I said, well, I got my pony. I looked out there and there was a road and a little pile of horse stuff. So he said, your pony must have got away. <laughs> he was a good dad. 
I wish when he was living, I would have appreciated him more. Thank you.
1977, he was appointed Associate Superintendent of Duplin County Schools and served in that position until 1981. Twenty years had passed. Working his way through the ranks, this educator understood the role of a teacher, a principal, a supervisor, and an administrator. The Duplin County Board of Education selected our honoree to serve as superintendent of Duplin County Schools. He remained in that position for 18 years, and he holds the distinction of serving one of the longest terms by a superintendent in North Carolina in one school district. The second half would be spent helping to shape the future of young people throughout Duplin County during a period in history full of growth, challenges, and unprecedented technological advancement. When you hold a record for serving as a school superintendent for almost two decades, the innovations, new initiatives, and changes that take place are immense. In that length of time, education, culture, and society can change so much that the framework for our lives can be challenged. This superintendent ushered technology into the schools of Duplin County. Teachers attending technology meetings in different parts of the state would return and report on how far advanced Duplin County was compared to some of the larger schools in North Carolina. In 1984, local area networks were placed in high school vocational classrooms. Computers were purchased and placed in elementary and high school media centers. From 1985 through the 1990s, local and wide area networks were installed in all 16 schools. During these years, some other notable achievements made by this honoree and, de and a dedicated school family include the following. The limited English program was implemented, as well as a Spanish program for grades K through two. The basic education plan, the standard course of study, and teacher evaluations were implemented in each school. The arts were supported, and media centers in each school had certified media coordinators. The Duplin County Schools Education Foundation, whose purpose is to improve academic achievement and recognize outstanding students and teachers, was organized. The National Effective Schools Program was adopted, and through this effort, Chinkapin Elementary School was recognized as one of the top 25 schools in North Carolina's push for school improvement. Duplin County was among the first to participate in the Instructional Leadership Program. The Model Clinical Program was established as an exemplary example for training new teachers. Three new schools were built, and improvements and additions were made to many others. Our honoree tonight served as a member of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association's Board of Directors and represented the Southeast Education Region and was recognized by this board for his dedication, foresight, and belief in safe and fair athletics. This superintendent served as a member of the statewide Low Wealth Consortium, which was organized to help provide educational opportunities for all North Carolina children, regardless of where they lived. As the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction moved toward inclusion of preschool and kindergarten education as a part of public education, educators in Duplin County Schools had already been positioned in the forefront of this movement. Duplin County Schools participated in the development and field testing of preschool screening instruments to assess school readiness. Today, preschool and kindergarten programs are an integral part of a student's education, and it was the leadership of this honoree and others 
that provided a foundation for these programs to grow. Even with all of these accomplishments and more, perhaps the honoree is best remembered for his personal interactions. Playing pretend with a pre-kindergarten child, visiting a school and making every effort to talk to every employee, demonstrating his faith and confidence in his staff, getting out early on icy mornings and personally helping to check the roads, implementing the delayed schedule for students and teachers on inclement weather days, aren't we glad? And always showing concern for his staff. When emergencies arose, our honoree's message was always the same. Take care of your family, whatever it takes. In May of 1999, the Duplin County Schools Education Foundation honored this individual by designating an annual merit scholarship in recognition of his dedicated and devoted service to the children of Duplin County. He retired from Duplin County Schools in 1999 after having served the schools for 38 years. Continuing with our sports metaphor in recognition of his coaching days, with retirement you might think the buzzer has sounded, game one. No, absolutely not. Our honoree now goes into overtime and spends almost another decade in public service to the people of Duplin County in the role of county commissioner. During the next eight years, he worked to plan, expand, and seek funding for the Duplin County Airport to emphasize the need for a well-trained county manager and to upgrade the Duplin County solid waste disposal site and reject efforts to bring municipal solid waste from throughout North Carolina and the East Coast to Duplin County. This individual was instrumental in the planning, financing, and construction of the agricultural complex. And this building that we are enjoying this evening, which is home to the North Carolina Agriculture Extension Service for Duplin County. Our honoree was appointed to the North Carolina Rural Internet Authority, set up to bring internet capability to rural counties by then Governor James B. Hunt and reappointed to a second term by Governor Michael Easley. Our honoree this evening is active in the Facent Improvement Group and has served as president. He has been a member of the Calypso and Facent Fire Departments and has served on the Facent Town Board. All of the many accomplishments in his professional life make up the man the public knows. But the most important parts of his life are and have always been the personal ones that he is most committed to. Being a loving son, husband, father, and grandfather. He is an active member of Facing United Methodist Church, where he is Sunday school superintendent and Sunday school teacher, chairman of Christian education and of the church planning committee, member of the vision team, and he also sings in the choir. A former student and teacher once presented this individual with a quote by Calvin Coolidge. No person was ever honored by what he received, but honor has been the reward for what he gave. Let me read that to you one more time. No person was ever honored by what he received, but honor has been the reward for what he gave. This chronicle of the life of our honoree tonight tells of his achievements and accolades. We come together to pay tribute to the qualities that define this person. Hard work, 
innovation, foresight, courtesy and respect for others, and the understanding that his successes were not dependent on the work of one, but on the interdependence of all. Remember what the Chinese proverb told us. Our honoree didn't plan for a year or for a decade. He planned for a lifetime, and he educated people. This evening, the Duplin County Hall of Fame is proud to recognize Leonard Steele Guy, Jr., better known as Mr. L.S. Guy. Duplin County Hall of Fame in the year of our Lord, 2017. There was a time when I had no trouble standing up speaking to a group like this forever. This is not one of those times. <laughs> I am truly grateful and honored to receive this great reward from the Duke County Hall of Fame. So many people in here, and I have seen many of you, so many people in here that have influenced my life in special kinds of ways. Um, I, I just have to say up front that the strength, any strength behind me, is because of my wife, Barbara, and I shall be eternally grateful for her. three children and they're here tonight. My oldest daughter is Nikki. Nikki. <coughs> her husband Randy and a grandson here, Dalton. I have two grandsons, three grandsons that are not here. One is in the University of North Carolina at Asheville. One is playing football and the other is just being. <laughs> <laughs> I have my son, Ellis, is here. Ellis, thank you. I have my youngest daughter, Candace, her husband, Bill, and grandson, Gage. <laughs> I told you, didn't I? And the only granddaughter that I have is Reese. <laughs> But I, I looked, and when I came in tonight, I, I suspected something was going on, but I was truly unaware of what was about to happen. Uh, I walked in and saw Gary Sanderson, and I saw some other educators that worked with me and uh, did some great things in education back in those years. And then I looked around and saw a lot of teachers who were involved in the Duplin County Public Schools, and we all together did some wonderful, wonderful things, and we were allowed to do that by boards of education who were supportive of public schools and allowed us to reach out beyond where we were and to do some special kinds of things. Um, I, I know there are two here, Dr. Rinson is here, and Joe Kikinata is here. Dr. Travis Scott, thank you so much, and I do truly appreciate my Faison family here, my church family is here, uh, so it's a, it's a special, special night, and I just repeat again, I'm so grateful and thankful for the one I did, and that you were a significant part of my life. Thank you for that.
Upon concluding our inductions into the Hall of Fame, I would like to remind you of the plaque located in the Dougal County Courthouse with inscriptions honoring inductees. It is a reminder of those who have contributed to the greatness of our county, state, nation, and or world. Past inductees are listed in your program. If past recipients and or their parents are here tonight, please stand. I said parents. If past recipients and or their families are here tonight, please stand as the inductees names are called. Judge Henry Leonidas Stevens, Dr. William Dallas Herring, Thomas James Baker, Zeddy Brentson Williams, Reverend James Menzies Sprunt, Dr. Corbett Latimer Quinn, Ed Dudley Monk, Christine Whaley Williams, Thel Beckton Overman, David Newton Henderson, Dr. Peter Weddick Moore, James Franklin Strickland, Faison Wells McGowan, Dr. Edward Lee Boyette, Judge Winifred Townsend Wells, Dennis Woodrow Ramsey, Preston Bruce Rayford, Luther Clayton Herring Sr., Lois Grady Britt, Senator Wendell Holmes Murphy, Robert Vivian Wells, Milford Roscoe Quinn, Gerald James Keenan, Dr. William Edgar Thornton Jr., James Robert Bob Grady, Dr. Hervey Basil Carnegie, James Jim Millard Smith, General Dan Kelly McNeil, James Gregory Henry, Helen Anderson Boyette, Colonel William Dixon, Mary Lyde Hicks Williams, Betty Ray McCain, Dr. James Seaborn Blair Jr., Senator Charles Woodrow Albertson, Thomas Elwood Revell, Edgar James Wells, Jr., Dr. Charles Forrest Halls, Carolyn Burnett Ingram, Dr. George Walter Kennedy, Geraldine Williams Tucker, Congressman James Gillespie, and Leon Irving Graham. Before concluding our evening's event, there are other friends to be recognized. The selection committee, composed of five anonymous members, representing diverse backgrounds and geographic areas of Duplin County. They have the most difficult of tasks the review and ranking of applications, which determines the recipients. The committee members are not known to each other and work independently. If you have a nominee for next year, now is the time to begin your preparation. Completing the nomination application involves much research. The deadline is always September 25th, and the mailing address is printed on the application. The Duplin County Register of Deeds for safekeeping of the medallions and bezels. Their post office also serves the Hall of Fame. Mr. Russell T. Williams of Faison for videoing this memorable event and the Duplin Times for covering tonight's events. Lastly, the Duplin County Hall of Fame Board of Directors, one representing each of our county townships. Please stand as I call your name. Melissa Blizzard Stevens of Warsaw, Jane Prasai Hollingsworth of Faison, Rebecca Rosa Ivy of Wolfscrape, 
Marilyn Carnegie Heroza of Glisten, Dr. Alice Smith Scott of Smith, Marie Smith Moretti of Limestone, Doris Albertson Hatcher of Sappers Creek, Richard James Warren of Island Creek, James Edward Gale Seals Jr. of Rockfish, Dennis Carr Knowles of Rose Hill, Eloise James McMahon of Magnolia, Charles Marshall Ingram of Kenansville, and Executive Director Ann Taylor. This concludes the Hall of Fame Awards Banquet. It truly is your event, the people of Duplin, as you have shown by your presence tonight. We look forward to seeing you next year, and in the true spirit of our county's Irish heritage, may the spirit of this old Irish blessing go with you. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sunshine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. May God bless you, our county, our state, our nation, and our world. Good night.